Hello, everyone. I'm honored to present this paper, which is joint work with Dr. Yan Chuang and Dr. Yi Xuan Zhou. Here's the outline. First, I will introduce the question analysis and uh, the problem formulation briefly. Then I will propose two sequential procedures in different scenarios. And finally, I will include two real data illustrations. What is sequential analysis? It was founded and developed by Abraham Ward with his colleagues in the statistical research group at Columbia University during the Second World War. Later on, it turned out to be a tool for more efficient quality control in that tree. A salient feature of sequential analysis is that the sample size is not predetermined, but instead observations are recorded and evaluated according to some predefined stopping rule. The problem of interest here is to estimate the probability that a gamma random variable exceeds a pre-assigned voting constant C. This quantity is useful, especially in the areas of lifetime data analysis and uh, reliability analysis. We focus on a two-parameter gamma population where beta, the rate parameter, remains unknown, while alpha, the shape parameter, can be either known or unknown. And we will discuss both cases separately. In sequential analysis, fixed width comes into estimation is a classic problem. We estimate P by P hat plus or minus W, where P hat is a point estimate, and uh, 2 W is the fixed width. However, this interval fails to account for the fact that a probability is always between 0 and 1. So alternatively, we turn to the so-called fixed accuracy confidence interval, where we do the transformation and define Q to be P over 1 mass P. And then given prescribed accuracy D greater than 1, we consider Q hat over D to Q hat times D. If we take the logarithm, we obtain log of Q hat plus or minus log of D, which is a fixed width confidence interval for log of Q. So there's a connection between these two confidence intervals. Now, in the situation where alpha is known, we can express the probability of interest as 1 minus f of c times beta, where f stands for the incomplete gamma function. So the probability is a function of beta. Starting with the random sample x1 but by xn, we consider the maximum likelihood estimate of beta, which turns to be alpha over the sample mean, so that we are able to estimate the probability of interest. According to the invariant property, the central theorem and the delta method, we can construct the asymptotic normality of log of q and hat, where the asymptotic variance has the following explicit expression, and we don't tell by a single beta square. Now, consider the following fixed accuracy comes into all for q. It should additionally satisfy the condition that the coverage probability must be at least one minus gamma, where gamma is a prescribed significance level. From this condition, we can obtain the minimum sample size needed, and we define it to be the optimal fixed sample size. Denoted by n one star, it has the magnitude c over log of d squared times sigma beta squared. However, sigma beta squared is actually unknown to us. It's essential for us to estimate it and uh, update its estimator at every stage as needed. We adopt its Emily and propose the following sequential procedure. Here's the associated stopping rule where M indicates a pilot sample size. That is, after collecting a pilot sample of X1 by, by XM, we check the condition whether m is greater than or equal to c over log d squared times sigma m one hat squared. If it is already satisfied, then no additional observation is needed and the pilot sample size will be our final sample size. Otherwise, we collect one additional observation at a time and check the stopping rule successively. We terminate sampling immediately after the stopping rule is satisfied for the first time. Obviously, the probability that n1 is smaller than infinity equals 1, indicating that our procedure p1 terminates with probability 1. 
And it's also clear that as d go to one and one goes to infinity. Upon termination with the acquired data, we can charge the fixed accuracy constant interval for Q and then for P accordingly. Our procedure enjoys the following two crucial properties, namely the asymptotic efficiency and asymptotic consistency. The asymptotic efficiency says that as D goes to one, the expected value of N1 over N1 star tends to one. It indicates the closeness between the final sample size and the optimal fixed sample size in the sense of first order. And the asymptotic consistency says that as D goes to one, the coverage probability tend to one minus gamma, which is the target. To verify these theoretical findings, we run simulations by implementing the procedure P1 using gamma of one, two with these values under 10,000 runs. We compare the magnitude of the optimal fixed sample size and the average of the final sample sizes. And we find that they are close to each other, which justifies the asymptotic efficiency. And we also find uh, the average of coverage probabilities is close to 0.95, which justifies the asymptotic consistency. Next, in the situation where alpha is unknown, then the amylase of alpha and beta have no closed form. To overcome this difficulty, we define yi to be the indicator of xi greater than c, so that yi's are ID Bernoulli random variables with probability success p. In this way, the sample mean of yi's serves as the amylase of p. Now, according to the central limit theorem and the delta method, we can claim the asymptotic normality of log of q and hat in the same fashion, where the asymptotic variance denoted by sigma p squared is one over p times one minus p. Now we consider the fixed accuracy constant interval and obtain the optimal fixed sample size, which remains unknown. We adopt the estimator of sigma p squared by one over p and tilde times one minus p and tilde plus m to the power negative one. We incorporate this term so that the estimator is always well-defined because otherwise the denominator has a positive probability to be zero. Next, we propose the sequential procedure in a similar way, which terminates with probability one as well. Upon termination, we can construct the countless intervals for Q and for P respectively. And our procedure P2 also enjoys asymptotic efficiency and asymptotic consistency. And these are verified by simulation results given here. And you can compare the magnitude of the optimal fixed sample size and the average of the final sample sizes. They are close to each other and the average of coverage probabilities is close to 0.95. Okay, so next uh, let me include uh, real data illustrations. First, uh, we use excess cycle times data in steel manufacturing. There's a sample from exponential population recorded in this paper where exponential is a special case of gamma with known alpha value. The probability of interest is that x is greater than 35. So we set these numbers and uh, set out to estimate this probability. Implementing the first procedure, we collect the final sample data listed here so that we can track the countless interval for p given here. In the second illustration, we use survival time data from dementia patients. A two parameter gamma distribution adequately fits the dementia data. And uh, we are interested in estimating the probability that the survival time is greater than 4.6 years. Setting these numbers, we implement the procedure P2 to, to collect the uh, following sample data. And uh, a 95% confidence interval for P is given here. Okay, so here are some references and that's it. Thank you.